Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. I wanted to talk to you today about something that's been on my mind for quite some time. And that is fake truthers. So before I go any further, let me define what I believe a fake truther is. A lot of these people will come on YouTube and they're disseminating all kinds of information. Political, world events, maybe even psychological dynamics and tricks and propaganda. And while those things may be good to know, maybe it's accurate, maybe it's not. Some things are exaggerated. Some things are clickbait. You know how it works. But if that person is not pointing people to the truth of the word of the living God and to the Lord Jesus Christ, if they deny his name and they deny his word, they're fake truthers. When you get born again, as you grow in grace and you learn of Christ, you learn it's all about Him. It's all about what He's done, what He is doing, and what He is going to do. That's why the book shows us, pull out any Bible you have, I don't think they've managed, the fake faux Bibles have managed to accomplish this feat, but don't worry, they'll get around to it. You open your Bible, you go from Genesis, which means the beginning, to the book of the revelation of who? Jesus Christ. It's all about Him. So whomever you listen to, I don't care what truth you think they're showing you, and most of it is an initiation into the dark side, whether they even know it or not, if I expose you to something, if I bring something in to contact with you, and you have exposure to it, what have I introduced you to if it's darkness? I see a lot of Christian channels doing this and well, so-called Christian, I can't look into their heart. I don't know. So you have to take them at their word unless they cannot define. If you would ask them, what what is being a believer? What is being a true Bible-believing Christian? And they can't define it, I already know. And you got a bunch of people who say they're Christian, and you ask them to define it, and they can't define it. I'll never forget the late Christopher Hitchens. I do believe he's passed away. I really don't keep track of a, a, uh, like atheists. It's not my thing. I don't, you know, I'm not into debating them or challenging them. Because the Bible says that the earth declares, the heavens declare the work of his hands. You know, so you can look around this earth and how beautiful it is. And, you know, we don't we don't get a whole lot of that in these metropolises, but. You get out into the country and you see the beauty and the canyons and the mountains and the lakes and the streams and how, just like the Bible said, everything begets after its kind, and you know there's a God. Now, you may not believe Jesus is the creator the way the Bible says, but you know there's a God. I mean, the Bible says it is the fool that says in their heart, there is no God. And the actually the there is there it, it's kind of added for meaning and understanding, but if you just read it as it says, it would be the fool has said in their heart, no God, so they're denying God, they know he exists. I don't know how you can hold a beautiful little baby in your hands and see the wonder and how. Everything is exploration and question. And some kind of way they beat us, beat that out of us before we get out of high school 
definitely by the time you get out of college. They don't, they don't want you exploring and asking questions. You know, only enough information, only gather enough information to be able to do a job like a slave. And that's it. Don't question everything the way the Bible says, prove all things. No, don't do that. And that's all a little baby does. In a moment, it starts it just gathering information, exploring. Everything goes in the mouth because that's their first way of, of testing everything. And I just want to taste it. And once they prove it, find out what it is, what it's about, they're on to the next thing. That's why yeah, any parent knows you got to watch them because all they are is an exploration. In some kind of way, they beat that out of us by the time we get out of high school or college. I don't have a problem with people questioning whether or not the Bible is true, whether or not God is real. That's what they're supposed to do. But then there are people that are disingenuous because, as I say, I don't believe that any person leaves this earth without finding the real, true, and living God, if that's what they want, if that's what they desire. The question is, what do they do with him when they find him? And this is all a part of the exploration for truth. If you remember, and I don't have my Bible in front of me, Jesus was standing before Pontius Pilate. Now remember, he's already declared long before this that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he's demonstrated it by miracles that had never been seen before by man. And only the living God could do. And he has demonstrated this a multiplicity of times. They weren't one-offs. They weren't accidents. He proved it by making it literally routine for him to do. And he's standing before Pilate. And he's already announced and proclaimed who he, who he is before Pilate. And as told Pilate, you wouldn't have any authority over me if it wasn't given to you from above. And he made Pilate a little nervous. He did. Go read it. And so when Jesus declares to him the truth, Pilate says, truth, what is truth? And Jesus didn't say anything. And people go, well, why didn't he say anything? Because he had already declared it. And he wasn't in the habit of repeating himself. He let, he let Pilate meditate on what he had already declared. As a matter of fact, let's turn there. Go to the Gospel of John. The 18th chapter. And I apologize, beloved, because of uh, any inconsistencies in the audio. I have had the most incredible time trying to get this done. All kind of issues with my audio. The devil is a liar, though. Start at verse 28. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment and it was early and they themselves went not in to the judgment hall lest they should be defiled but that they might eat the Passover Pilate then went out unto them and said what accusation bring ye against this man they answered and said unto him if he were not a malefactor we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. 
Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. I want to reiterate what the Lord Jesus Christ said. He said, Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So, beloved, one of the points that I'm attempting to make is that people who are of the truth love the truth, which is King Jesus. And if they're disseminating information and pointing, you, pointing out to you things that are lies within the system that we live in, that's fine. That's fair game. But if you have somebody who is telling you that Jesus is not the truth, that Jesus was just a good man, or some form of philosopher, or a prophet, and they deny his deity, and they deny that he is God manifested in the flesh, they deny his work on the cross as the payment for our sins, for salvation, if we trust and believe in him for what he has done in his finished work on Calvary, if they deny that he is the living God, there's no truth to be found in them. Because as Jesus said, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And they have already declared to you by their denial of Christ and of his word, they don't hear his voice. So I ask you, what truth is it that they have to offer you? They're just one of many deceivers. Another thing they do, beloved, is that they will show you all of this ungodly, demonic imagery and a lot of them claim to be Christian I don't know if that's true or not can't look into their heart but I know the Bible says we're not supposed to put any unclean thing before our eyes and some of this imagery y'all see it and you can't get it out of your mind for days weeks or even months because you had no business viewing it in the first place so why are they doing it then initiation exposure again being exposed to something means that you're being introduced to it so we have to be careful what we're being introduced to So why are they, you know, showing you all this ungodly imagery? That's puzzling to me. 
And this is what I'm just trying to expose people or show people what's going on. But I, I don't think it's necessary. You can be descriptive without showing people all these ungodly images. Just saying. I mean, some of it is like thoroughly demonic and grotesque and disgusting and, you know, I I don't want to see it, but they'll do it. And I know we're not supposed to be ignorant of Satan's devices. I am cognizant of that. And I just, I'm growing weary of all of this sensationalism from from one side or the other about so-called truths. Jesus is the truth. And while it may be fair to expose and warn, to a degree, people of things that are transpiring, I also know that the Bible says that we're not to let our heart be troubled. Jesus is speaking. He's God Almighty. He ain't never said to worry. Worry is a sin. Because it means you are not operating in faith, you're operating in fear. And the Bible says fear has torment. Perfect love casts out all fear. So we're not called to be fearful. You know, one of the groups of people that get cast in the lake of fire, the Bible says the fearful and unbelieving. One of the reasons that they're fearful is they are unbelieving. Now, that doesn't mean if you're a believer and you've ever been afraid, you know, that's not what that scripture is talking about. These people have never trusted in King Jesus. Never. That's why they're there. So, beloved, just be... Prayerful when you're considering certain things and listening to certain things. And I'm sure, I am sure most of you are. I'm just saying don't forget to do that because there's a whole lot of mess out there. There's a whole lot of people claiming to be exposing and telling you the truth and showing you things. And some of it is quite interesting. Some of it is a little, <laughs> a little bit uh, or a whole lot of bit of sensationalism. It's not a surprise to us, is it, believers? The world that we live in, that we're surrounded by devils? I mean, when you look at the scripture where Jesus said, Behold, I send you out as sheep among wolves. Be therefore, uh, be wise as serpents. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. I think a lot of times we as believers we don't we don't see that passage correctly. We we think there's a few wolves scattered among the sheep. But that ain't what Jesus said. Jesus said, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. So get the right picture in your mind. Sheep among wolves mean the sheep are few and the wolves are many. There's a scattering of sheep among the wolves. It's, it's not it's not a few wolves among the sheep. So we should really always be on guard. But that that's a provisional on guard because we're trusting in Christ, not in our own abilities. But we, you know, because we can only see so far. Far as your eye can see, it might be a good distance, but you still can only see so far. God sees it all. So we have to trust in Him and rely on Him for His provision. And fake truthers, they'll, they'll show you things that are facts, but they're not the truth. There's one gentleman I heard say, uh, the facts can change. The truth never changes. You might need to meditate on that for a minute. It's, it's not an accident that Jesus is the truth and he says, I am the same. Or the Bible says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
The old covenant says, I am the Lord, I change not. Are we starting to notice a theme here? <laughs> it's an immutable fact that God cannot lie. Jesus is the truth. And one thing about the truth, the truth will always be factual. But facts can change. The truth never does. For example, let's take health. You go and you get a diagnosis, which I am convinced is a curse, a pronouncement of a curse. And if you get in agreement with it, you receive the curse. That's my never-to-be-humble opinion. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it, whichever one it is, death or life, will eat the fruit thereof. Why is that in there? There is power in our tongues. And what we get in agreement with, we receive. You've entered into a contract when you enter into an agreement. So that's why you need to make sure you agree with the Lord Jesus Christ. And what he says in his word. It may be a fact that the doctor has diagnosed you, but the facts can change. Jesus is the truth. The truth never changes. So the Bible tells us that by his stripes we are healed. Well, if we are, we is. And actually, I think I actually misquoted that. It's by his stripes we were healed. Past tense, what he's done for us. I know later on it's going gonna, it's gonna to repeat that in the Bible. I think it repeats it somewhere and puts it in present tense. I'm not a hundred, so don't quote me on that. But right now, for the best of my recollection, I remember it says, By his stripes we were healed. And if we were, we are. And if we are, we is. I know. I just, I just murdered all you grammar. You grammar snobs out there, that's okay. I ain't mad at you. I'm doing that for dramatic effect. Your mind will remember it because it was so egregious. <laughs> now this may be difficult for some people. Because healing is is one of the things that's a struggle for us. Because we've been so conditioned with this devilry called the medical system. And, yeah, I'm going to put something up here on the screen to show you guys something that I was astonished when I recognized it. I am convinced. I can't prove it yet. I think I'm going to find it somewhere eventually. That the word science is actually a play on the word seance. Because these people, when you go research back, not all of them most assuredly, but a goodly number that we should be concerned. We should give pause. That science is a play on the word seance. That they consort with devils to come up with a lot of the stuff that they come up with. I mean, you research, uh, take for example, Jack Parsons. Parsons technology, right? He was into the occult. So who was he consorting with? Because it wasn't the Lord Jesus Christ. He never made that claim. He was consorting with entities, devils. If you believe what we've been told about his existence and what he's created. Because we don't know. There's so many lies that they tell and how they twist up, flip stuff upside down and backwards. I'm sure when Jesus lays it all out for us and shows us everything and how much we've been lied to, the the only things that, that will remain true are the things that were really derived from him and the things that he set in order, that he has set in his divine will. That's the other thing I wanted to comment on real quick. I don't believe in free will. I do not. And no, I'm not a Calvinist. When I say I don't believe in free will, what I mean is is that 
what we've been told is is so called free will has really been altered. It's it's skewed. You see, God is the one who has sovereign will and free will. We do not. We have freedom of choice within his sovereign will. So the Lord has set the limits. He has set the boundaries. As he told Job, where were you when I stretched forth the line, Job? Did I, did I consult you then? No, he didn't. So God sets the order. He sets the boundaries. And man, created in his image, when I say man, I'm talking about male and female are able to operate by his divine order within that will. And we can pick and choose within that will. So he set the limits. Whatever the limit is, from from point A to whatever point, okay, he's the one that set the limit. He set the boundary. And man has to operate within that boundary. And yes, there are things that are not his quote-unquote will that man violates. But even the violation is within his boundaries. Uh, some of y'all can catch that and understand what I'm saying. It's just like the devil. He can't do whatever he wants. Because if he could do what he wants, mankind would be eviscerated. Would have already been in less than two seconds flat. The devil is on a short leash. There's only so so many things that he is permitted to do. Because he has to operate within the limits and the parameters that the Lord Jesus Christ has set. It's true. That's why you have to be careful what you get in agreement with. Because if you get in agreement with the devil, you know, people who get in spiritual warfare and understand and came came out of the occult or study the occult, they can tell you about unjust soul ties and unjust soul bonds and spirit husbands and spirit wives and all this mess. Because people got in agreement with that stuff. So this is when getting back to what I was saying about doctors. And like I said, I put this picture up I want you to see. And I, and I was critical of demonic images, but I'm not even talking about just something like depicted like this. I'm talking about just vile, ungodly images. Y'all need to be careful because there are spirits behind that stuff too. Don't forget that people going to get cast in the lake of fire. It's not just people who take the mark. It's people who worship the image of the beast or take the number of his name. It's not just, quote unquote, the mark. There's three things that they that the Bible says you cannot do. And one of them is worship the image of the beast. So that's indeed why the Bible cautions us and tells us not to put any unclean thing before our eyes. For example, pornography. And most of that, y'all don't even realize a lot of those people are transgender. And you wonder why you're having all these weird feelings, y'all messing with that stuff. Their spirits behind that stuff is not harmless. It's not harmless. And you might say, well, I only want straight sex. It does not matter. The, the very word pornography. It never stays where you start. You will sink lower and lower and lower into more demonic devilry. That's the way the devil operates. He, he doesn't care where he starts. You ever, it's just like a drug addict. When they started, nobody's born a drug addict. I know what they tried to tell you in the media. I don't believe it for a New York second. They were making pronouncements over these babies to bring curses on them. This bring curses on them so they could do all kind of demonic stuff to them on top of it. That's my never-to-be-humble opinion. And 
And it's based on some research that I've done. So, anyway. Be careful what you get into agreement with. Because you are consenting. When you turn that stuff on, that pornography, and, and listen, it's not just this illicit stuff. The media is growing more and more pornographic. Let me give you an example. A lot of these different so-called sex stories, these these people you take for example in well I'm going to pick one in particular in the in the Cosby incident most of those people quote unquote that were so called women were not women they were transgender a goodly number of them were transgender if not all of them I haven't examined all of them to say but I'm giving you a caution here. Everything that you see on that television, almost without exception, is fake. It's not real. It's the Truman Show. They make it up as they go along. Just like their father, the devil. The Bible says, Jesus was speaking, when he was speaking to the Pharisees, he, he said, You are of your father the devil, and his works you will do. He was a murderer from the first. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. Because he's a liar and the father of it. Well, if the devil is the creator of lies, what are his children going to do? Think about it for a minute. Lie. And this is why, as a believer, you should do your absolute best to never lie. You know why? Because when you tell someone a lie, it is a form of witchcraft. And when the person believes it, a spell is cast. Because they are operating under false information. Think about it. Meditate on it. We are not to lie. You do better just keep your mouth closed. That's why Jesus said, Swear not at all. Neither by God's throne, right? Be uh, neither by heaven, because it's God's throne. Neither by the earth, for it is his footstool. Neither by your head. Or your hair, because you cannot make one hair white nor black. But rather let your yeas be yea and your nays be nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. In other words, you're going to start lying. Just say yes or no. We also see in the New Covenant, you should say, if the Lord will, if the Lord will, I should do. I, I will do this or that. In other words, God willing. Because we're not shot callers. All that mess comes from, you know, man will be his own God. Junk. A lot of people think that Freemasons lick all over that number 33. And they do if you start looking into it. You're just going to see 33s all over the place and all their little junk. And they say, well, they think that represents the fallen angels, because a third of the angels fell with Lucifer. It's possible. I ain't going to say it wrong. But it could also be that Jesus was around 33 when he was crucified, buried, and resurrected. And they believe they will become gods. Uh, see, see the tie-in? They believe they they can transcend. I, I think it's, it's, it's probably homage to Lucifer and them, but it's also that as well that they think they're going to be like God. That they will be able to accomplish transcendence. What do you think that Tower of Babel was about? They, they was doing something they had no business.
I'm not saying you shouldn't explore and discover, but be careful what you're discovering. Everything ain't for you to know. Be led by the Holy Spirit. If he tell you to leave something alone, sweetheart, you better leave it alone. And be careful what you get into agreement with. Now, I'm not saying all doctors are evil. Don't misunderstand me. There are some good doctors. Truth be known, a lot of them have left the medical profession or became naturopaths or natural doctors because they see how their hands are tied being in that system. But there are good doctors that don't just pull out a prescription pad and write people prescriptions for stuff that's just going to make their bodies more toxic. I actually saw a doctor, had her white coat on, in a video, say, she tries to steer people away from that. She called it poison. She did not call it medicine. Good for her. If you've never heard the lecture by Dr. Joel Wallach, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, you should check it out. Check out his critique of the medical profession and what they do and the articles and the facts that he shows. And don't, don't just listen to it. Watch it. There's a video where he does a presentation. It's like three hours. It's worth every minute. He shows you article after article and and, and literally documents the things that he's saying. He's not just talking off the top of his head. Dead doctors don't lie. But this particular doctor, she said, well, if you, you want to fight me, I'll do everything I can to fight you to keep you from getting the poison. But, you know, if you don't want to help your body heal, I'll write you this prescription for the poison. Called it poison. God bless her. May Jesus protect her. <laughs> because the medical profession has destroyed people that they felt were outside of their parameters. Destroyed them. People who actually found cures for things and w they were doctors. Destroyed them. They wear those white coats so they have the similitude of priests. And we were programmed, going all the way back, probably before Marcus Well BMD. I don't know how I'm old enough to remember that, but Marcus Well, well BMD, it was reruns. It was reruns, believe me. Uh, but <laughs> Marcus Well BMD, you know, the, the noble doctor that made house calls and only had people's best interests at heart and you know, that thing. So that's been programmed within a, us to just blindly trust these doctors and no, you should not. No, you should not. I'm going to say it one more time. No, you should not. Research for yourself. Investigate for yourself. Ask a million questions if you want to. It's your body, it's your life, and it's your right. And if you don't like the way something sounds or smells or feels, or you have the right to say, as Dr. Wallach says in that video, the most important word that will save your life when dealing with those doctors, no. Don't believe me, go watch it. Do some research. Or as my... My brother always says, don't do research. Do real search. Because research is just looking into what somebody else investigated. Do real, real search, R-E-A-L, and discover for yourself. Because then you, you can get an agreement with this statement. A man with experience is not at the mercy of a man with an argument. People can make all the arguments they want on certain topics. If I have explored it and proved it to myself, it doesn't matter what argument they make. I can smile, I can thank them for their information, and I'm going to keep it moving. Why? Because I know the truth. 
But I wanted to give you an example of the, the fact that facts can change. Jesus is the healer. And we saw where he healed people that were born blind, for example. The man that was born blind, that was a fact. But Jesus healed him because he is the truth. And that fact changed. So don't look at circumstances and say, well, you know, these are the facts and I'm just stuck. Oh, Sweetheart, our God exists outside of space and time because he's the one that created it. Set these things in order. And he can step in and intervene at any moment and will on your behalf. You study what Jesus said about a person saying unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe whatsoever he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. That's some powerful words. I don't think we spend enough time thinking about that. I know a lot of people attack Word of Faith, and yes, there has been some absolute buffoonery in Word of Faith, but there have also been some good things that transpired from it, and that's people being a little more cautious about what they say out of their mouths and what they get in agreement with. There is great truth in that. It's right here in this book. That we should be cautious with our words, and we should be in agreement with Christ, and we should proclaim what the Word says about us, no matter what the circumstances. Because we walk by faith, not by sight. Now, I'm going to say something. I hope it doesn't sound like a contradiction, because it's not. It's an elaboration. So people don't make the mistake of just running around thinking they can name and claim everything. God is not a genie in a bottle. That's why I say you need to be in agreement with Jesus, with the Lord Jesus Christ. So you get into his word and you study and you see what he has proclaimed for you, what he has done for you, what his promises are to you, and you begin to agree with those things. Then you know you are aligning your choices with his sovereign will. Now we can be willing to do things, but again, like I said before, or unwilling to do things, but it's within the parameter of the limits he set. I can't say let there be light and there is light. Unless I, I'm standing next to a light switch or I have a flashlight in my pocket. And that ain't the same thing as when King Jesus, who is the creator, said, let there be light. Refer to the Gospel of John, the first chapter, if you are not sure that he is the creator. It says, all things was made by him, were made by him, excuse me, and without him was not anything made that was made. You can't pin it down no better than that. You can't be any clearer than that. It said all things. And without him was not anything made that was made. How, how can you get any clearer? That's why I take issue with Jehovah's Witnesses and I, I will accuse them of being as disingenuous as they can possibly be. Because you can show them that. Uh, the Gospel of John, the first chapter, where it says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. And then say, flip over to Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So then, right here, you could ask a five-year-old, if you tell them that Jesus is the Word, He's the one that created all things, which the Scripture declares, flip over to Genesis 1.1 1, 1 and show them that. And you know what a five-year-old say? If you say, who is Jesus? God. Yes, yeah, a Jehovah's Witness, you get crickets. Because they can't answer it. 
Because they have to admit it. They're not seeking truth. They want to push dogma and propaganda and deception. And they've been deceived and believe lies. Jesus is God Almighty. So before somebody goes, well, how do you know that Jesus is what it's talking about in the Gospel of John? Because it says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. And let me let me interject something else. Why I hate these modern Gnostic blasphemous, heretical, damnable translations like the NIV. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about them. Those books. Because it denies the deity of Christ in many passages in these modern translations. There's times that the Bible declares that Jesus is the only begotten Son, and they'll say the only Son of God, and that's a lie. Because, beloved, if you believe in Jesus now, are we the sons of God? God has many sons. But he has only one begotten Son. And they remove a critical word. I can't stand those modern translations. Because they leave people shipwrecked. And I could go on and on and on with examples. I, I won't because even though this is about fake truthers, I'm showing you examples of things that are presented that are lies, and we have to be in agreement with Christ. And if a truther, quote-unquote, is not in agreement with the Lord Jesus Christ, what truth are they showing you? Is the truth they're showing going to save your eternal soul from damnation? And this is for somebody that might be lost that's not a believer yet. Are they giving glory to his name? Because it's all about Jesus. Now, most of these people are into self-aggrandizement and are full of pride because they want to show you how smart they are. I'm going to tell you what, if they don't have Jesus, they ain't that smart. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world? That would include, it's not just talking about wealth. That can include knowledge. They always tell you knowledge is power. That's what all these so-called enlightened ones and Freemasons and stuff are seeking, all this knowledge. But of a truth, I tell you, they are headed straight for damnation. Because the one who is the truth, they reject. This Bible says so. The stone that the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. That is an indictment against the Bilderbergs, the Freemasons. They've rejected Jesus. And he is the chief cornerstone. Some of these modern Gnostic blasphemous heretical damnable translations put Jesus as the capstone. And it's a lie. He is the cornerstone. See, they're trying to make Jesus and Lucifer the same person. So when the church is taken out of here, the bride of Christ is taken away, they can come in with all this junk. And show people, see, even the Bible said, that, that's what they're going to do, y'all. The rapture is a real deal. And the proof is in the book, first of all. It's in the Bible. You got to tear out a bunch of pages and a bunch of passages. So I don't, now I've never understood why people call it a secret rapture. Ain't nothing secret about it. The world already knows these devils who are waiting for us to be taken, because until we're taken out of the way, the man of sin can't even be revealed. They're waiting with bated breath for the church to be removed. That's why they got all this stuff ready to go, waiting in the wings. But until he that will let is taken out of the way, the man of sin can't be revealed. And they're waiting. And they got their lies ready which is going to be aliens took us.
And they can spin that a hundred different ways. They either took us because we were in agreement to go, <laughs> or they took us because we weren't going to be in compliance or or in agreement with the new system. So they had to remove the troublemakers. They're going to come up with something. It's going to be a lie. It's going to be lies on top of lies. Wrapped in lies, steeped in lies. Because the devil is a liar and they're his children. And they're furthering his agenda. I'll show you something else. Y'all ever see those pictures of Winston Churchill and maybe even some other people going back, you know, 50, 60, 70 years, and they're holding up what looks like the peace sign, the two fingers. Some people will tell you it's a, it's a two-finger sign for Satan or the Baphomet. It is, but it's more than that. What they're actually saying is they're working Satan's five-point plan. That V, that P sign is a V, the Roman numeral five. And they're showing you they are in agreement with Satan's five-point plan. Now, some of you say, well, I've thrown that up and I didn't know. Yeah, I'm not talking about you. They tell us that, but in conditioning you, they have you doing stuff that are rituals that are satanic. And you don't even know it. You wear stuff that's satanic and you don't even know it. Like the so-called peace sign that's in the circle with the, looks like a Y, upside down. That's an inverted broken cross. That's not a peace sign. Because in order for them to have the peace they want, they got to destroy the church and destroy Christ. This is their agenda. You can go throughout history and see all these demonic wars that they've started, which have always been started on lies. Take, take countries, this country and every other country, the war on lies. And we've seen that in our recent history. Don't y'all believe that mess that they're telling you? It's lies. So they can go rape, rob, murder, and pillage the devil's children. And you know who they target mostly in these wars? Christians. In these countries that they go into, they go into areas and they kill Christians. They'll kill other people too, don't misunderstand. But those are the ones they target. Oh, don't believe me, just do some real search. The late Stan, Stanley, I think his name was Stanley. I know he went by Stan, though. Stan Monteith. He used to do a program called Radio Liberty. I'm not saying it. I agree with everything he ever said, because I don't know everything he ever said. But I recall this one broadcast where he said that Hiroshima and Nagasaki that were bombed when Japan was bombed were the two Christian towns in Japan. You know, predominantly Christian towns. And he pointed out that you can go out throughout history in all these wars where they have killed literally millions of Christians in these wars. It is a way for them to go in and kill Christians by getting these declarations of war. Now, believe it or don't, since I know the devil's agenda, it's true. Look at how they're targeting us right here in America. Look at the evil that's being done and laid. And All you have to do is look. It ain't even a matter of opening your eyes. All you have to do is look. There's no, there's no great enlightenment that has to happen. You can plainly see the agenda. They hate the Lord Jesus Christ, and by extension, they hate us. Y'all know it's true. I know I'm preaching to the choir. I know you know it's true.
Beloved, I don't know how much more time we have. I know time is short. The good news is whether or not you believe in the rapture, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, in his death, burial, and resurrection, you're going. Because we are sealed until the day. Notice how it says that in the Bible. The day, singular. The day of redemption. Job was waiting on the day of redemption. He said, I know in my flesh I shall see God. How's that going to happen? Job's been dead and gone for centuries. For millennia. How is he going to see God in his flesh? Because he was re it was revealed to him by the power of the Holy Spirit that there was a day coming that those who were believers, even though they went to the grave, they would see God in their flesh. That there is a day of judgment coming and the righteous would be restored. How did they know that? The Holy Spirit revealed it to him. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. That's everyone who's ever believed on him. From Genesis to the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ. All of that until the point where he says, come up hither. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, read it for yourself. And I saw a door in heaven open. Who's the door? Jesus is the door. And I heard a voice as though it were a trumpet speaking with me. And it said, come up hither. And people always want to make that. They say, well, it's the last trump. But they don't understand that in the book of Numbers, the 10th chapter, the Lord shows us a glimpse of two silver trumpets. Silver is judgment. Egypt was about to be judged for the evil they had done to his people. And the Lord tells Moses, he says, fashion two silver trumpets. The first trumpet, because see, they're looking at these trumpets of judgment. They don't have anything, or, or, or actually, they're, they're actually trumpets of, uh, of, of wrath. He's pouring out wrath. Over here in Numbers 10, remember, the New Testament saints had to be able to refer to Scripture. Scripture was the Old Covenant. And so for John to show them a trumpet in the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ, they had to be able to go back to the Old Covenant and find it. Well, in Numbers 10, you'll see where he says, fashion those two silver trumpets. He said, the first one you're going to sound. Is to tell the people to make themselves ready. I'm paraphrasing all of this. In the interest of time. Fashion these two silver trumpets. The first one. You're going to blow. And that's going to let the people know. To make themselves ready. To what? To prepare to move out. They're getting ready to leave Egypt. Types and shadows of Christ. Types and shadows of his prophecies and promises. Demonstrated. Literally. They literally left Egypt. We're going to literally leave this Egypt. And if you don't know that America is Egypt, Sodom and Gomorrah, Tyre and Zidon, and Mystery Babylon all rolled into one, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Do a little research. Look at your money. Look at the Im demonic energy on your money. But the Lord says, fashion two silver trumpets. The first one is going to tell the people to make themselves ready. The second one, when I blow the second one, when, when I tell you to blow the second one, that's going to tell the people to move out. Boy, if y'all can't see that, I, I don't know what to tell you. So he said, well, what was the first trumpet then for, for the church? Remember, they had to be able to look and see types and shadows and be able to say, oh, okay, we understand what you're saying, Paul. We understand what you're saying, John. <laughs> the first trump was Paul saying, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but shall be changed. In a moment, in twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort 
one another with these words. So good. Accuse us of the rapture being a comfort doctrine. We're doing what the scripture said. Comfort one another with these words. It says so plainly. That's why I wonder if these people are believers, y'all. I'm telling you, some of them, uh, the devil can be more religious than anybody else. And if you don't think the devil goes to church, he probably sits on the front row in most churches on Sunday morning. Him and his imps. There is such a thing as a religious spirit, and it is not of God. Not the one true and most high, not all the Father. No, it's not. Because it's full of pride and it stinks to high heaven. So the announcement, listen, how do we know? How do you know I'm right? How do you say, well, how do you know you're right with the, that, uh, that that was the, the Trump? Because of the response of the church. The first trumpet in the Old Covenant God's instruction was, in Numbers 10, make yourself ready. Get ready to leave. What happened when Paul made this announcement? The Bible says that a person who believes in the glorious appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ will purify himself. What? He's making himself ready. Okay, all right. He's making himself ready or herself ready for the glorious appearing. Why? Because at any moment, Jesus could say, come up hither. Do you really want to, do you really want to be caught with dirt on your hands? Yes, we have been washed. We have been cleansed. But we ain't supposed to be playing in dirt when he comes. And dirt means sin. We're not supposed to be playing in it when he comes. You don't want to be laying in the bed with somebody you ain't married to when he comes. You're going to get embarrassed. Come on now. Purifies himself. Makes himself ready. That's the first trumpet. Hello. I just demonstrated it. Receive it. Don't receive it. It's all right. I got my piece about it. The second trumpet is Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Come up hither. I saw a door in heaven open, and I heard a voice. What? This sounds like a trumpet. And it said, come up hither. That's the second trump. That's the one we waiting on. The longer I live, y'all, I don't know if you having this experience, but the longer I live, the less I want to be here. I'm a sojourner here. The longer I live, I'm praying, whoever that last soul is, Jesus is holding this thing up. May they come on, believe on you so we can go. Because we're getting down to the to the bottom of the barrel here, the the scraping the barrel for the last remnants of people who will believe on Jesus. There's a whole lot of folks don't want to hear nothing about him, nothing. You mention the name of Jesus, they scatter like roaches. So as we see darkness rising, don't. Be troubled by that. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The light shines brightest in the darkness, y'all. And the world is going to be able to see the difference between true biblical Christianity and this fake pagan mess that's scattered all around us. So somebody is disseminating truth, so-called truth. And they're not pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. And they're not saying you need a Redeemer if you ain't saved. And they come against the Word of the living God, and Jesus is the Word. The Bible says he had a, a name that no man knew in the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ, and his name is the Word. And then it tells you what, in the Gospel of John, the first chapter, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is the truth. 
And if they're not pointing to him, and they're not telling people the true gospel message, which is that God is not angry at the sinner anymore, all sin has been punished in King Jesus on Calvary, believe in him and his death, burial, and resurrection, and you too will receive the gift of pardon, which is the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. And as, as Sister Paula says, the Bible literally says that it is the spirit of adoption here. As the Bible said, well, we should cry, Abba, Father. He is invited the world to become his adopted son. That's the good news. The gospel is only one message. And hell is not a part of it. Yes, you tell men that they can be delivered. They will be with faith in Christ from eternal damnation and punishment. But that is not all there is to the good news. The good news is that God loves them. has open arms for them and will receive them if they'll simply believe in what Jesus has done. Beware of fake truthers, y'all. They're all over the place. All over the place. If they lead you away from the Lord Jesus Christ, they lead you into something else as your provision or to seek relief in this demonic system. It is a deception. It is a trick of the devil. Your relief is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And none other. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen. Amen.